Hello, today we're going to be talking about creative strategy, planning, and development. This discussion is drawn from Chapter 8. In this video clip, we'll just be talking about inputs to the creative process, and that's really about planning. Account planning is what I think of as the coolest stuff that goes into advertising. It's conducting research and gathering the information you need about a client's products and services as well as their consumers, their customers, and their target audiences. So it's all the stuff you need to, to know in order to do a good job of creating good advertising. An account planner is somebody who provides that decision maker with information required to make intelligent choices. So the account planner is like a research position, but the research is oriented towards anything that will help make communication decisions. And account planners are responsible for research that's conducted during the creative strategy development process. So it's, it's the input to creativity. And that's an important point. There's a context for the creative process. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. Creativity is not an end in and of itself. It has to serve the marketing communication needs of the client. And that typically means that information provides guidance on strategic choices. One of the expressions you'll hear used is preparation, incubation, and illumination. This really talks about the idea that there are inputs to a creative process. Developing creative strategy is an informed process. One of the first steps is that background research. And when you're approaching this kind of problem, there's techniques that you can use or a general approach that you could use. First, you want to read everything you can get your hands on. If you're not a curious kind of person, this is not a good job for you. You want to talk to the client. You want to talk to customers. You want to examine everything you can about the company, the product, the brands, competing brands, trends in the marketplace. Ask for product information from the client and listen to what the client has to say about the product. And that research you do with the target market, you probably have access to qualitative and quantitative data. But what you probably want to do is also talk to people yourself who are using the product or people who might use the product and try the product yourself. That's important. You want to gather and organize information on the product, the market, and the competition. All of them are important. And you're analyzing trends developments in the marketplace overall. You also want to think in terms of problems. There may not be any problems, but you want to get uh, feedback from customers on ideas they may have for product improvements, um, what features are that, that are what I call hot buttons. What is it that makes them actually want to buy the product? Or how do they see the product positioned now and how do they think the product should be positioned? Those kind of informal discussions with customers can be very valuable. Also, uh, psychographic studies. The company may have some psychographic studies. Those kind of studies construct a detailed lifestyle profile of consumers. Um, and that, that profile, something like a personality profile, is, is something you can construct even without that quantitative input. And then if you've got access to branding research, you definitely want to do that. If you don't, you may want to conduct some branding research. And that would be research looking at um, the history of the brand, how the brand is perceived, um, what associations consumers have with that brand name. Focus groups are another really good qualitative research input into the creative process. Um, th those are something that I used to run fairly often when I was in an advertising agency. And the creative team loves focus groups because they can hear the target market speaking about the product in its own language, in the language that that target market chooses to express itself in. And that becomes valuable for the creative team. So focus groups provide these valuable insights at very early stages in the creative process. And a focus group typically consists of 8 to 15 consumers from an actual or potential target market. There's a guided discussion about the product. And typically, we're trying to get a better idea of who the target audience is, what they like, and who the creative team needs to communicate with and the kind of language they need to communicate in. 
Focus groups are a great input into the creative development, but there are criticisms. First of all, some creatives don't like to go through any kind of formal testing process because they feel that it weakens a creative execution. Also, within the focus group itself, strong personalities can have undue influence. And participants may be either unable or unwilling to reveal their behavior patterns and or motivations. Um, despite these criticisms, focus groups are still considered an extremely valuable tool in creative development. We also see sometimes used ethnographic research, and that simply means observing consumers in their natural environment. The creative process can be viewed as, as a cycle. You evaluate ideas, you reject those ideas that are simply not going to work, you refine the ideas that remain, you give these ideas some kind of a final form, and then you take that final form and you have people evaluate them again. So it's an iterative process. It goes back and forth. In terms of techniques used for verification and revision, you've got directed focus groups, which we just talked about, message communication studies, which are studies where we have uh, respondents sit down, they experience communication, and then give their reactions to it. Uh, we can use things like portfolio tests, where ads are embedded within a portfolio and we get reactions to them. Or we can use viewer reaction profiles, um, and that's a formal profiling of consumers' reactions. There's a lot of interesting information on research uh, conducted on advertising concepts in Chapter 8 of your book. We're not going to cover all of it here, but again, if you're thinking about making a living in the land of advertising, you definitely want to read that. One of the things that's happened with the advent of social media is there's new ways to learn about your customers. And a lot of research is coming out of viewing what people have to say about your brands on social media. One organization that recognizes the value of advertising research in forming excellent advertising is the Advertising Research Foundation. One of the awards they give is the David Ogilvy Award. This award is the top honor in a competition for the best advertising based on research. This year's campaign winner was Take on TJ by Nike. Here you can see a summary of what that campaign was. I've downloaded the print case for this, which is only about three or four pages, and I encourage you to read it. Let's take a look at the video that was produced based on this research. TJ? That TJ? TJ's looking ahead of you right now. Reason I keep coming up silver and bronze. Always runner up. Award for participation. This close. I win city. TJ takes state. I get fouled. TJ takes the free kick. I bring my family. TJ brings scouts. Team captain. Coach's pet. TJ's even good at foosball. But things are going to change. Because this is my year. And TJ's going down. That wraps up our discussion of the kind of research we do to help develop really great advertising. Happy marketing!